Hi everybody. This is my brackish tank. I've got a figure eight puffer and five bumblebee gobies in it. And this tank never ever gives me any issues. It just ticks over like a clock. But I noticed tonight that the water is slightly cloudy. Uh, I did shoot a video earlier this evening where I was feeding my pea puffers in my tank upstairs and I was talking about how dirty these fish are. Puffers in general are just messy eaters. They have high protein diets. They really produce a lot of bio load. So Butterbean here, my figure eight puffer, he's getting a little bit bigger now. He's growing up and I've been feeding the tank a little more heavily. You can see the uh, graveyard of snail shells on the bottom and I've been putting larger snails in there. We'll see if we can get a little closer look without scaring him away. I've been using the ram's horn snails instead of the uh, pond snails for the most part and I also still feed him his freeze-dried krill. Uh, right now the tank is all messy. I haven't even wiped it down from the last time I did a water change. You can still see the dripping on the glass. Anytime you've got a tank that's got any salt in it at all, whether it's a saltwater marine tank uh, or a brackish tank, uh, it's tough to keep the glass clean. So we will do a little bit of an after video once I'm done the water change. But the point I want to make is that noticing that the tank is a little bit cloudy gave me a little bit of concern so I checked my water and sure enough I've got about 0.25 parts per million nitrites now that's not really enough to be overly concerned about with the nitrites the nitrites aren't really immediately dangerous like that uh, if it was 0.25 parts per million ammonia I would be much more concerned especially with a scaleless fish like this puffer you really want to keep your ammonia levels next to nothing when you've got scaleless fish like puffers loaches uh, or all other fish that are considered scaleless fish. The ammonia affects them much more quickly than scaled fish. So I'm still going to do a water change. It's due anyway. I'm getting a little bit of nitrite buildup and why not? You know, just I'm going to go ahead and do a water change, uh, get the tank a little bit cleaned up for butter being there. But the point I wanted to make was that if you notice something different, pay attention to it. You know, I wouldn't have normally done a test on this tank, but I noticed that the water's a little bit cloudy. And in my experience, when the, when a tank starts clouding up like this, you, it's the, the culprit is almost always uh, your nitrogen cycle is not quite up to snuff, or something's going on that's causing a little bit of nitrite buildup. So I fully expected to find a little bit of nitrites, and sure enough, I did. So learn your tank. Get to know it. Um, when I first started keeping fish, I checked my tanks all the time. Uh, I would just randomly test them for ammonia and nitrite, and I just, I did it just constantly. I learned all of my tanks. I did, you know, I would check before water changes, I'd check again after a water change uh, to see how much reduction in nitrates I got from, you know, what size water change. And I just tinkered with my tanks all the time, and I paid very close attention to them. And as a result, I don't really need to do that anymore. I'm not in any way advocating the idea that you can check your water by looking at it. That seems to be a article of faith that a lot of people go by, that they can just kind of check and look, and my water looks fine. I hear that all the time. Oh, my water looks fine. Um, I'm not in any way advocating that. The only way you can check is by testing. And in fact that's exactly what I did. I noticed something unusual so I tested. So it was the testing that told me something was wrong. If the water was a little bit cloudy and I checked and there was no nitrite or ammonia buildup, I wouldn't have worried too much about it. Tanks get a little bit of cloudy sometimes. Um, you know, I come back tomorrow and, and it'll all be sorted out. But it's worth checking because this tank usually doesn't get cloudy. So that's the real key. When you see something unusual, start looking into why what's causing it what's making that happen and in this case it's probably I've overfed the tank I threw a couple of big snails in there yesterday I threw uh, three times today I think I've walked through and and Butterbean begs like a puppy so it's hard to just walk past him and not want to give him a little snack and as a result I've probably just overblown the the bio load in this tank I've thrown too much 
food in there and it, the, it's just overriding my nitrogen cycle a little bit. I've overthrown the balance. If I left it alone, eventually the tank would sort of catch up and balance itself out. But as I said, I see no point in letting him sit in there in high you know, levels of nitrites or even detectable levels of nitrites in this case. It's only 0.25 parts per million. But we are still going to do a water change. So sit tight. I'm going to get the tank a little bit cleaned up. We're going to do about a 5-gallon water change, maybe a 3-gallon water change, something like that. Not much. So here's your before. And here we are the following day. Now, butter bean tends to get pretty stressed out during water changes, so I didn't do any more follow-up video last night. I did wait until this morning. I came down, I checked. Our nitrite levels are fine. Our ammonia levels are fine. Uh, what I did find when I was doing the water change was when I initially did a three-gallon water change just because that was the amount of brackish water I had in my reservoir, and I figured it would be enough. So when I was pouring the water back in, I noticed that what was being swirled up and kicked up from the back of the tank that I can't really see was a bunch of remains of the uh, freeze-dried krill that I put in there. It had basically absorbed enough water and got soft and never got eaten and sunk to the bottom of the tank and I didn't know about it. So there was quite a bit of um, you know, decaying shrimp in there, but what I also found was quite a bit of my java fern was not doing well either, and there was a bunch of dead leaves lying across the bottom in the back. So I really probably should do something about the water circulation in this tank, because it seems to be a dead zone right there in the back. Uh, so that is something to take note of. And this is the amount of java I pulled out of there. Those are all dead or dying or decaying pieces of java fern so that was definitely contributing to the amount of ammonia that was being dumped into this tank as well so it got me thinking about the nitrogen cycle and ammonia buildup and what I just did and how that happened and I think I want to make it a separate video but I do want to talk briefly about um, I get people ask me a lot or, or the, the topic comes up a lot of people that want to set their tanks up and then they want to put a ton of biomaterial in the tank. Um, you know, they're, they're, they were asking me about what if I put two sponge filters on it or this or that. And that's not really the way it works. You don't get extra biofiltration just because you've got tons of surface area. Your bacterial cultures are only going to grow to the amount of food source, the amount of food source being the amount of ammonia or nitrite. So if you've got one little guppy in a tank and you've got five sponge filters in there, it's just unnecessary. You're only going to develop enough biocultures to deal with the bio load of a single guppy. If you added more guppies, there'd be plenty of room in those sponges to develop more and more cultures. And that's all that does. It gives you more space to grow into. If you add to your tank, if you're going to increase your bio load, that will give you available space. But it doesn't happen by magic and it doesn't happen overnight. Um, what I basically just did in this tank by blowing up all that bio load and throwing in all of that shrimp and stuff that was decaying and breaking down, that would be the equivalent if I just put a great big fish in this tank and added to the bio load significantly. I've got plenty of biomaterial, but that biomaterial only currently houses enough uh, bacterial cultures to deal with the bio load that's being produced. If I suddenly kick that bio load up like I just did, with all of that decaying material, well, I've got room to grow into that, and eventually, if I'd left the tank set, it would have eventually balanced itself back out. I've got tons of uh, biomaterial in this tank. I've got ceramic rings and bio balls, and of course, all of the material in the tank, the, the uh, substrate and the rock. In theory, this tank could handle way more bio load than would be reasonable, because what would happen would be you'd be creating nitrate the end product so rapidly that you would just the, the buildup would be too much too quickly so I'll never be able to out bio load this tank but it doesn't happen instantly when you increase the bio load it takes time for your bacterial cultures to grow into the new additional amount of food source in other words the additional ammonia and nitrate that are being produced so I would have gotten there eventually 
but how much would my fish have suffered in the meantime? And of course, I don't want all that just filthy stuff decaying and lying around the tank. But the same principle applies if I just added another fish. I'd still have to deal with the time it would take for the bio filtration to adjust to the new bio load. So having additional biomaterial available in the tank is never a bad idea, but putting tons of biomaterial in a tank isn't the solution. It doesn't fill, it doesn't cycle your tank in any faster. It doesn't make the water any cleaner. It doesn't give you any less nitrates or anything like that. It just provides more surface area for your bacterial cultures to grow. They're still only going to grow into the available amount of food source. So there was my little nitrogen cycle lecture and once again it was because I simply noticed that my tank looked a little cloudy and the moment I notice anything out of the ordinary I go and check to find out what's going on. And that is my conclusion. Too much food, too much decaying plant material and me not paying enough attention to what is going on in my tank. Uh, never forget you as the fish keeper, or in this case me as the fish keeper, is a part of this system and if I'm not actively being part of this system and maintaining it and checking it and keeping my eye on it then that's a pretty big failure within the system and it can cause your whole tank to crash so you are probably the most important part of your aquarium you gotta pay attention to what's going on in there if you see anything out of the ordinary start looking into it start trying to figure out what's going on and learn and the more you learn, the more you know, and the better your fish will be, and the happier fish keeper you will be. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. I hope that was informational to somebody. Uh, please subscribe if you're not already. I've got several videos lined up in my head that I'm trying to work on now. Uh, hopefully I'll be getting them out within the next few days, and you don't want to miss any of those. So thanks again for watching. Uh, this is my brackish tank, not my dwarf pea puffer tank, but this is my brackish tank. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you real soon.